Hello, and welcome to this quick tutorial going through how to enter hospital level data for the COVID Research 3 study. Before we start, just to briefly recap that this data should be collected according to one of the predefined body regions, and all the patients in this region must be captured, even if this is across multiple units within your hospital. One form should be completed for each block of 14 consecutive days you collected for that body region, and separate forms should also be completed for children and adult patients. To make this process easier, we suggest using the hospital level collection data sheets. And this allows you to record the number of operations in each category and then sum this up. And it's this total column at the bottom that you'll need to enter on to the online form. So once you've watched this video, confirm that you've seen the video, you'll then be asked to confirm that you've followed up the SARS-CoV-2 status for each patient. SARS-CoV-2 cases are defined as positive PCR or rapid antigen tests in the seven days before or the 30 days after surgery. Remember, this does mean you won't be able to have completed follow-up until 30 days after your collection period has ended. To then select your hospital, you can either use the drop-down link on the right, or you can type in the box to more easily find your hospital. Once selecting this, you then need to say which body region you're collecting for. Examples of what operations count for each body region can be found within the data collection sheet. Finally, you then need to say whether you're submitting this form for children or adults. And remember, the separate forms should be submitted for each if you've collected these. Moving on to the data, the first aspect that you need to submit is the number of elective operations performed during your 14 day block. This is a count of the number of operations. And so if patients were operated multiple times, they count as multiple operations. So for example, we have 50 elective operations on our body region, we'd put 50 here. We then need to say how many of these cases tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. For example, two. Now, if we enter a figure in this box that's impossible, so say we say we had 50 patients, but 60 people tested positive for SARS-CoV-2, we'll get this red error message here. And this means that the data we've entered is impossible. Therefore, you need to go back and review it as there has to be an error. If we change this to a figure that is possible, but improbable. For example, if we operated on 50 patients and every single one tested positive for SARS-CoV-2, we'll get a blue error message. And whilst this doesn't necessarily mean that the data you've entered is incorrect, we request that you go back and check it just because it does mean that this figure is quite unlikely. Moving on, the next aspect is how many patients whose operation was cancelled on the day of surgery. So for example, two. Now for each of these cancellations, you'll then need to record what the main reason for them being cancelled was. And then you'll need to say whether COVID-19 contributed to this or not. If COVID-19 was a contributing factor to this reason, you select yes. If COVID-19 wasn't a contributing factor to the reason the, the surgery was cancelled, you select no and you'll need to do this for each cancellation you record. The next aspect you need to record is how many emergency patients underwent surgery during this block. For example, five, and how many of these tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 afterwards. If no patients did, obviously you put zero. The final thing you need to collect is the totals for your hospital. So this is how many elective operations were performed in the whole hospital across all of the body regions, for example, 250. And then how many emergency operations were performed in total across all body regions. So now that we've entered all of the data, we'll then be asked to confirm that this data that we've entered is correct and complete and therefore should be included in the analysis. And once you've confirmed this, you'll then be asked to submit your authorship details. 
Now, it's really important that you enter this accurately here. This is the only place we'll be collecting authorship for the hospital level components. So first of all, put your name and then put your ORCID ID. Now, this should be in the format of four blocks of four characters each. And you can find this on the ORCID ID website. If you haven't got an ORCID ID yet, do make sure you register for one for free using this link or by searching for the website. You then also need to put your email address in. The final thing you'll need to enter is the ORCID ID of your hospital lead. You should get this off your hospital lead who should also have provided you with the link for this survey. Now, once you've done this, you can then submit the form. Once you submit the form, you'll be taken to this page and you'll get a unique reference number for your submission. You'll receive an email stating that you've submitted the results and you can also download a PDF copy of your responses if you wish. If you need to submit additional forms, for example, other 14 day blocks, other age groups or other body regions, you can then click this link and you'll be taken back to the stars. Thank you very much for watching.